The ultimate timepiece is said to be the legendary Rolex Explorer. But is this watch the superior choice? Let's find out. Introducing the Tudor Black Bay 36, paying homage to the Explorer's timeless design while infusing its own robust character. I think it looks simply more manly than the curvaceous oyster case, and that's largely due to the trademark Black Bay flat sides. Chime in down below. Do you prefer a rounder case or a sharper or angular style? The Black Bay 36 has beautiful, laser sharp, high polished bevels that travel throughout the case and add just the right amount of class. The top of the lugs are brushed, and sitting on top of the mid case is a high polished bezel. That bezel tapers up towards the sapphire, with the crystal protruding just slightly above that bezel. I'm not too fond of that nearly flush design. This is one area where I think the Explorer just does it better. I really love when a crystal sticks out. Do you agree? Additionally, the sapphire is lacking anti-reflective coating on that underside, which isn't a huge negative since the crystal is flat. But aside from those nitpicks, it's tough to pinpoint any more negatives. Because this watch is an absolute gem, it feels well balanced and sits perfectly flush on the wrist. And with its 122 gram weight, I often forget I'm wearing a watch. I haven't worn an Explorer in a while, but if I'm remembering correctly, the case back protrudes a lot more than this, and it's not as comfortable. Now something I love is that distinctive embossed crown. It adds character and is a standout feature. And I mean literally, it stands out. It's got that black protruding crown tube. It almost looks like a, a Mario sewer pipe and I love it. The newer Black Bay 36 just has a tiny Rolex style nub for a crown and that just doesn't do it for me. This crown does have a clutch system and screws down perfectly every single time. And it helps give the Black Bay 36 150 meters of water resistance. That's a big number for a non-diver all-arounder watch. The new version has a downgraded rating of only 100 meters. Now let's do those dimensions. I got 36 millimeters in diameter, a secret measurement of 30.5 millimeters. We got a thinness of 10.3 and no drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 44 millimeters. So classic Explorer dimensions. I think it wears great, but you guys be the judge on the faraway shots and let me know how it wears. Let's quickly check it out next to my Black Bay 54 so you can get a visual comparison. The Black Bay 54 is 37 millimeters and this one is 36. The secret measurement is about one millimeter larger on the Black Bay 36. But with a longer lug to lug on the 54, I think they wear pretty much the same on the wrist. Now, one of the best features of this watch is every time you look down to read the time, the watch is smiling back at you. That's the nickname, the smile dial, which is now discontinued as the newer model has straight text and that's an absolute shame. This tiny detail was something I really grew to love. The Tudor insignia is well executed with that gorgeous raised silver. It works well with the clean glossy black dial. And complementing this aesthetic are those applied markers. Featuring a high polish finish, they adopt that iconic Black Bay diver design. And putting a diver's dial on a sports watch was brilliant. It just works so well, and even the way they did the second hand with that snowflake shaped loom instead of the typical round is awesome. Speaking of the snowflake, the now iconic snowflake hands are here and they're done to perfection. Oh how we change in this hobby. I remember when I disliked this handset so much. I couldn't believe it. Now it's one of my favorite handsets. The bold snowflake hour hand is perfectly proportioned. Unlike the new Black Bay 36, which is now long and slender, it's a bit more feminine and I think the proportions are way off. 
And you know what? It reminds me of those fake Seiko mods with the Tudor style handsets. It's just awful. Now let's take a look at that bracelet. It's completely solid with female end links and it's 19 millimeters tapering down to 16. This three piece oyster is fixed via screws and it has a fully milled clasp with ceramic ball bearings. The brushed finish is excellent with high polish on the sides. The bracelet feels high quality in the hand. However, there are drawbacks worth noting. The absence of halflinks meant I had to turn to an aftermarket solution to achieve that perfect fit. Also, it doesn't have the 5mm T-fit or easy link, a feature I've come to appreciate in modern Rolex and Tudors. And finally, it's only got three micro adjusts, which may be noticeable for you if you cannot dial this in. Now let's do the loom. The loom is pretty good, and I believe it's stronger than my Black Bay 54, which is an actual diver. The Black Bay 54 has smaller loom plots, and it is faux patina, creamy color. Okay, the movement in this watch is five years old, so this time grapher session should be very interesting. We got the caliber. Tudor 2824, but they changed the name to T600 right around the same time they changed from ETA to Salida. The ETA version is no more, but that's a shame because it's superior. Tudor used to modify the movements. They used to change the shock absorption to the KIF or KIF, which was famously used by Rolex in the past. And they also changed the regulator of the movement. They removed the Etacron and replaced it with the TrioVis regulator, which is much more precise. But no matter which movement you get, both are adjusted to five positions and both have the proper no date modification and they're both the top grade. They will perform like a chronometer, but they are not officially COSC certified. So keep that in mind. Originally, this was priced at 2850 USD. And when you compare that to the Explorer 36 at 7250, wow, that's like 40% of the price. And because of the family connection, it makes it seem like an absolute steal. So what are your thoughts? Make sure to give your two cents and if you're on your way out, don't forget to like the video. But if you want to watch more, click into one of the two videos on the right of your screen and I will see you there.